Don't try to fool us, Megan's pathetic new tactic to forget about being left out of the coronation has backfired. Well, looks like someone decided it was time for a new tactic. Remember Megan was complaining on every little slide that she was using multiple media platforms to insinuate that the royal family were racist and didn't care if she felt suicidal, remember, she said Catherine made her cry because Megan was missing. She should have forgotten that she ever existed in her place. Let's see Megan's colon. It's easy and effortless and cool as ice. What you don't believe dot good. Find out what he did on Monday in his first appearance this year. She was presenting a TED talk and all her soft focus glory through the video and the pink and that shiny hair with a smile on her face. Not enough. Good dot later, she and Harry were seen at a New Brunswick playoff game. The LA Lakers were facing the Memphis Grizzlies and a kiss cam caught Meghan and Harry laughing and laughing together even though Meghan's arm kept Harry from reaching out and getting a real kiss. So obviously the new Meghan is happy. She is carefree. He is living his best life, there is nothing wrong with that. Not even a country full of people who, in anticipation of the king's coronation, are obviously thinking about what the late queen allegedly said just before Prince Philip's funeral. Thank God Meghan is not coming now. She was dubbed Dutch at one point as difficult, but she's the new Meghan and she wants us to believe she's decided despite weeks of back-and-forth negotiations with Buckingham Palace over the role she and the prince will play, decided she just didn't want to come. He didn't want to distract, you know despite multiple reports that Harry and Meghan were actually threatening not to attend unless they could hang out there on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. You know, with real working royals, they don't complain all the time, they don't care about reality shows and book deals, they forget everything, they won't reveal all kinds of secrets and grievances just to get revenge on the royal family. But that's Meghan and Harry's trademark, it's not vindictive, it's vindictive. He's small and he's looking to make money he'll see that raiders aren't, he'll get the limelight as a special ops team chasing a high-value target, then ask everyone to leave them alone. Stop looking at me, I mean the South Park Worldwide Privacy Tour episode hit the nail on the head. So when news broke on Friday that Meghan would not be coming to the coronation due to an unsatisfactory exchange with personal letters from King Charles she had written, expressing concern about unconscious biases within the royal family to which they weren't thinking. Oh yeah, that sounds about right, but Meghan says no, that's not how it happened. That would never have happened with somebody like her. She would never do that. Certainly not after she sat right across from Oprah back in 20, 21 with that smug smirk on her face, asserting that a mysterious senior royal had made some inappropriate comments about the skin color of her unborn child. But that's not how Meghan is, dwell on things, you know, it's not like she's sitting there and brooding over all the wrongs that's been done to her, it's not like she ever will. For example, accept an award from the Kennedys. The American family itself would be royals for standing up to structural racism within the royal family, only to have her husband turn around and backtrack on that claim a few weeks later. Their stories are always very consistent, Meghan Markle doesn't lie when they say something. We can take it literally. We can always believe what they say and so over the weekend Meghan's spokesperson Scooby Doo issued a strong denial from a spokesperson. Do you even want to guess how it started? Well, obviously the Duchess of Sussex started it because she will never give up that title, but he still went on to say that the Duchess of Sussex is living her life in the present. Not to mention correspondence from two years ago regarding conversations from four years ago everything on. Okay, we need to demystify the claim a bit. You have to get the scalpels out, slice and dice it and throw it away because it's a pile of garbage. So they want us to believe that Megan doesn't think about old grudges. It's his superpower that I have to give him, it's part of his origin story, I in fact, do you remember the first time we discovered it? No, it's because of a Vanity Fair cover that named her as Britain's next royal. I remember what the cover line said. She said she was crazy about Harry and what about the flattering piece, a resounding endorsement. B. Establishing him as a future royal with the implicit approval of the palaces. So what did he do in response? 
she cried. Racism. Half Indian woman reportedly decided to insult Megan with a racial epithet. What was Megan's complaint? Exactly? Well, he was complaining because the cover of Vanity Fair referenced a song called I'm Just Wild about Harry.so. It was a song that was 139 years old and it was sung by blackface Judy Garland, who on earth under 95 would also know such a fact. And so the nightmare began not for one but for two countries. Honestly, I don't think America and Britain have been so united against a common enemy since World War II, such a hypocritical, rude woman who, after accomplishing everything she seemed to want fame, wealth and privileges. He spent most of his time as the world struggled. So now, on to the second part of this statement, we encourage the tabloids and various royal correspondents to stop the grueling circus they alone are creating, really. Now only they create. I'm talking about Oprah, I'm talking about Time magazine. The cut variety Finding Freedom, its misnamed archetypes with Meghan's podcast series, Netflix and Harry's memoir, are the media even if they don't leave it alone. IT really is the worldwide privacy tour and Meghan and Harry's mocking series on Netflix. Meghan had the nerve to insult the Queen of the Lake and compared their first meeting to something many Americans would have experienced. Medieval times, dinner and tournament. Trust me friends, it's not high class and then he made this theatrical mockery of what it was out of courtesy to the queen of the lake to support her exactly. He was just sitting there with a really stupid, embarrassed look on his face. But I don't even know if I can really say look at his face, I think it might just be his face. If you look up from the hand that feeds you in the dictionary, I'm pretty sure you'll find a picture of Meghan Markle right now but we're supposed to believe Meghan chose to skip her coronation. A major event that will be followed around the world because she is living her best life there. Is she really that happy? Well, that's quite a dent, but its value really lies in exposing just how petty and mean-spirited Meghan is, and how rude she was when talking to her future sister-in-law, one who honestly outclasses me for keeping it in her back pocket so she can use it in the future. She's so oblivious to see that this act only makes half of this argument bad, and it's not Catherine. I mean, poor little girl Catherine was too young for her bridesmaid dress. This exchange was so incredibly passive, aggressive, and was 20 years old. Well okay. I'm sorry, but of course we don't believe her and I'm sure this pretty incarnation of a girl will eventually pass, but in the meantime it looks like the royals have once again played their hand expertly. What do the palaces think of all this? Well, according to Meghan's biographer Tom Bauer, he thinks that in the late Queen's mind everyone is happy that she is the power on behalf of Americans around the world who actually have a bit of good sense. Except, 